Hi, and welcome to the third video podcast. My name's Charlie, and I'm a nutrition scientist working on the education team at the British Nutrition Foundation. In this video podcast, we'll continue to look at the Eat Well plate, and this time we'll be concentrating on the milk and dairy foods group. In this episode, the nutrition feature will look at keeping well hydrated, which is even more important in hot summer months. Today I'm at Keen Farm in Somerset to see what types of foods fit into the milk and dairy foods group of the Eat Well plate, as well as to see how some of them are produced and processed. We should eat some foods from the milk and dairy foods group every day. The range of foods that belong to this group is quite small and consists of milk, yoghurt and cheese. However, there are many different types of milk and dairy foods available, for example made from cow, goat and sheep's milk. Milk and dairy foods are a really important part of our diet as they provide calcium which is easy for our body to absorb. We need calcium for healthy and strong teeth and bones. Even though we can find calcium in other foods, such as green leafy vegetables or bread, it's not as easy for our body to absorb from these sources. Milk and dairy foods also provide other important nutrients, such as protein, B vitamins, vitamin A, potassium, phosphorus and zinc. So how can you fit these types of foods into your diet? Well, here are some ideas to get you started. For breakfast, you could have skimmed or semi-skimmed milk on breakfast cereal, mix fresh fruit with low-fat yoghurt, or have a fruit smoothie made with skimmed or semi-skimmed milk. For lunch, you could have a cheese and salad sandwich, drink a glass of milk, or have a pot of low-fat from our tray. And for your evening meal, you could go for grated cheese on a pizza or spaghetti bolognese, add low-fat natural yoghurt to soups, stews, curries or casseroles, or go for cottage cheese in a jacket potato. In the UK, most of the milk that we drink comes from cows. At this farm, the cows are usually milked twice a day, once in the morning and once in the afternoon. When the cows have been milked, the milk is then taken by a tanker to be treated. The tanker arrives at the factory and the milk is emptied. At this point, a sample of the milk is taken to make sure it meets strict standards. Once the tanker has been emptied, the milk goes through a process known as pasteurisation, where it is heated to a high temperature to kill any harmful bacteria that may be present. The milk is then chilled in storage tanks until it is ready for packing. The milk is then packed into plastic bottles and labelled. Once this has happened, it is ready to be delivered to shops and supermarkets. A sample is also taken from the bottled milk to be tested. This is to make sure that the water content and fat content of each type of milk, whether it is skimmed, semi-skimmed or whole milk, is correct. To keep the fat content of your diet down, opt for low fat varieties of yoghurt, fromage frais and creme fraiche, go for reduced fat varieties of cheese and you could also choose skimmed or semi-skimmed varieties of milk. These lower fat options still have the same amount of calcium as full fat varieties, but they just contain less fat. The fat content of milk and dairy foods can vary quite a lot. It's recommended that we should go for low fat or reduced fat versions where we can. The following graph shows the fat content of different types of milk. As you can see, on average, skimmed milk has 0.3 grams of fat per 100 millilitres, semi-skimmed milk has 1.7 grams of fat per 100 millilitres, and whole milk has 3.9 grams of fat per 100 millilitres. So even whole milk has quite a low fat content. You don't have to avoid full fat varieties of milk and dairy foods all the time, but it's a good idea to keep a check on how often you're eating them and how much. So why not go for smaller portions or eat them less often? You can check the amount of fat in milk and dairy foods by looking at the nutrition information on the food label. By comparing similar products, you can choose the ones which are lower in fat. So, to summarise, 1. Include some milk and dairy foods in your diet every day. 2. Remember these types of foods are an important source of calcium which we need for healthy, strong teeth and bones. 3. Go for lower fat varieties where you can. And 4. Use the nutrition information on food packaging to help you make healthier choices. 
The second part of this video podcast will focus on the importance of keeping well hydrated. Making sure that you're drinking enough fluid throughout the day is important as over half of your body is made up of water. You need to replace the water that your body loses throughout the day, for example in sweating, going to the toilet or by breathing. By making sure that your body is topped up with water, you'll be helping to make sure that your body is working efficiently and effectively. Signs that you may not be drinking enough include feeling thirsty, having a headache, passing dark coloured urine when you go to the toilet, feeling sleepy and being unable to concentrate. The amount that we need to drink each day varies from one person to another. Some health professionals advise that we drink about six to eight glasses of water each day, but the most important thing is to make sure that you're drinking plenty of fluids and other drinks besides water count too. If the weather is hot or you've been active, you may feel you need to drink more. We can get our fluid requirements from water as well as other sources and even from the food that we eat. For an adult, around a third of their fluid intake can come from the food that they eat, such as fruit and vegetables and even bread and dairy products. Water is a great way to keep well hydrated, but other drinks such as fruit juice, fruit smoothies, milk, tea and coffee can count too. Drinks such as tea, coffee and cola contain caffeine, which, if you consume in large amounts, can have a mild diuretic effect on your body. This means that you may need to go to the toilet more often. It is best to drink these types of drinks in moderation and include other drinks that do not contain caffeine throughout the day. Avoid drinking too many carbonated drinks, as these tend to be high in added sugar and acids, which can contribute to the risk of tooth decay, especially if you drink them between meals. When you've been physically active, your body loses water through breathing and sweating, and even if you don't feel that sweaty, you've probably lost more water than you think. That's why it's important to replace the fluids that you've lost, and you may need to drink more water or fluids to help do this. Whilst being physically active, it's better to take small, regular sips of water or other fluids, as this helps to rehydrate you more quickly, rather than taking one big drink at the end of your workout. In addition, research has also shown that even slight dehydration can affect your sporting performance, so make sure that you drink before, during and after your workout, rather than just having one big drink at the end. To make sure you're getting enough fluid and feeling your best, here are some ideas to keep you well hydrated. 1. Keep a bottle of water with you so that when you want to drink you can have one whenever you feel you need one. 2. Don't wait until you feel thirsty before you have a drink. 3. If you don't like the taste of water on its own, try adding slices of lemon or lime to give it a different taste. 4. Go easy on carbonated drinks and squashes, as these types of drinks can be high in acids and or added sugars, which can contribute to the risk of tooth decay. Have these types of drinks only occasionally, and have them with rather than between meals to help minimise the damage to your teeth. 5. If you're active, make sure you drink throughout your workout. Remember, rehydration is achieved more quickly if you take small, regular sips rather than one large drink at the end. And six, keep cold drinks in the fridge or a cool place. They'll be much more thirst quenching on a hot day if they're really cold. Well, that's it for this episode. The next video podcast will look at the meat, fish, eggs, beans and other non-dairy sources of protein food group. I hope you can join me then. But in the meantime, if you need any nutrition information, why not check out our website at nutrition.org.uk or foodtofactoflife.org.uk. Bye for now.